Good day, my plant foldies. This is Richie at Growfolds, and today we will be going to a big box store, a grocery store, and a local plant nursery in Dallas. Um, if you haven't already, please be sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. Um, I've noticed that a lot of our viewers are still not subscribed on the channel, and I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my daily content. Um, but today we are in South Dallas at Walmart, and I'm just gonna check out to see what kind of restocks they have. It looks like they have um, not that many plants, but you can see right here, we've got an Epipremnum Arium Golden, or what you would call a Golden Pothos. This is for $10.97 by Garden Expert. Um, I do like Golden Pothos. I would highly recommend those as a beginner plant for anybody that's starting out with house plants. And right over here, we have a self-watering planter for $14.97. This is a Calathea Dottie. Love the purple um, Calathea. And then right here we have some skin daps is silver ants and what i like about skin daps is silver ants in these hanging baskets it's by um garden expert it's for 10.97 and this is actually a pretty lush looking skin skin daps is hanging basket um these ones are branded by walmart obviously these plants are actually um sourced out by costa farms but for 10.97 this is not a bad looking hanging basket at all of skin daps is. again skin daps is are um what they call the silver pothos even though it is not an epipremnum arium they can tolerate lower light conditions it's a little bit slower in growth and right over here we have a beautiful diphen bakia and guys we already know the diphen bakia are a little bit um, harder to grow just because they do require a little bit higher light um, lighting conditions they are beautiful i do like the variegation this one is for 9.97 in a six inch planter and look at this guys hoya compacta hanging basket by costa farms this is for 1987 gotta love you some hoya compacta or hindu rope um, i am looking for a variegated version of it i've heard that there are some um, variegated versions floating out there so i would be very interested to see if we can run into one and that's why plant foldies or if you're new to the channel what i call my viewers and subscribers i go to so many big box stores and plant nurseries looking for specific plants um, if you are um, a regular viewer you already know that i love some aglonema and this one is an aglonema silver bay beautiful looking one for $14.97 and then we have a ficus larata right over here this is also for $14.97 in a self-watering planter um, this is considered the fiddle fig tree this one requires a little bit higher lighting conditions and when you place this plant you want to keep it in a um, spot that stays consistent because if you move it around it starts to drop its leaves and then we have some more beautiful silver um bay aglonema we've got some golden pothos hanging baskets right over here for 1097 and then we've got a um gokla or glauca plant right here um gokla or however you um pronounce this hanging basket i love the silvery um foliage of these this plant it looks like it would be trailing very de um, delicate looking plant i'm not sure about the care tips for it it looks more like succulent type plants um, this one is for 1090, I mean, not 1987. And then we have a Peperomia Serpents right over here. I do like the Peperomia Serpents just because look at how beautiful the leaves are. They have a perfect heart-shaped leaf. Um, and you know what? Just because it's green, it does look like it's um, going to be more of a vigorous grower. I would like to get one of these Peperomia Serpents. I would think this would be easy to propagate as well. It kind of reminds me of a Tradscanthia. And that's the thing, guys. Um, Walmart has been getting a lot of nice um, plants, but this one is a little bit more bare. Not complaining. I really haven't seen a lot of trending tropicals. Um, I've just been seeing a lot of these hanging baskets. Like right over here, we have another Peperomia Serpens. Um, like I said, again, with all of these big box stores, it's almost hit or miss. Not all big box stores are um, created equal. Some Walmarts get more plants than others. This one is a little bit more bare. I do appreciate the hanging baskets. Like look at this beautiful staghorn fern right over here. Gotta love the silver foliage of a staghorn fern. And this one is also for $19.87 by Costa Farm. So at Walmart, it is a little bit um, less expensive as compared to Lowe's or even um, Home Depot. And I do love all of the neon um, color plants. Like right over here, we have a beautiful philodendron cordatum lemon lime. And check this out. Not only is it yellow, but look at that sport variegation right over there. There is a half leaf, um, half moon variegation where it's just completely green. And on the other side, it's white. I'm probably going to end up just taking this plant, even though I already have a philodendron cordatum lemon lime because of the sport variegation. I doubt it's stable, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try to propagate this. 
Um, and you know what, hum, you, you can't go wrong with a philodendron cordatum lemon lime. It's a beautiful plant. Care tips, I would say, is it does like bright in the um, direct light to get that yellow foliage. If you give it less light, it will be more green or a neon green color. So the more bright light you give it, the more yellow it's going to be. Um, I definitely want to show you guys all of my golden yellow neon plants. I am collecting them. Same thing with dark foliage black plants. And then right over here, we have a neon pothos or epipremnum arium neon. Beautiful looking one. This one isn't as perfect as the other one that I found at a Walmart. I literally was able to get it out of a pallet box. So that's the thing. If you get lucky to see a live restock by like Walmart or a big box store, um, you will get some fresh looking plants and they're the most healthy when they come out of their um, boxes from pallets. Here is another philodendron cordatum lemon lime. Look at that yellow leaf right there. My plant foldies, I am curious, which one do you prefer more so? The philodendron cordatum lemon lime or the Epipremnum Arium Neon Pothos. I like both of them equally. I might lean toward the heart sheep, you know, heart leaf shape of the Philodendron Cordatum, but that's really it. They're both pretty vigorous growers and I absolutely love the sport variegation. And that's the thing, guys. Have you ever gone to like a big box store or a plant nursery where you find a specific plant that has some kind of sport variegation and you're like, I have to buy this, see if it's stable? This is a situation where I'm gonna end up buying that hanging basket. And then right over here, we just have a regular Philodendron Cordatum, the green form. So you notice the yellow form and then the green form. Both are beautiful plants. Um, I like them both and they're easy to care for. They're very easy to propagate. Um, I would love to be able to um, have these trailing in my house. And that's the thing about hanging baskets. Um, if you have the space and the command hook strips that I have, you won't have to drill holes into your ceiling. So I'm excited about that. And then um, we often see this um, Dracaena Janet Craig Compacta beautiful looking plant in a six inch planter at walmart these are for 9.97 this is also by garden expert um, i gotta um, love this as well and we have some tread scanthia right over here look at that this is an exotic angel plant inch plant for um, 4.97 so it's slightly cheaper than lowe's or home depot at walmart and then right over here we Kind of have a um, Diphenbachia that's not looking too healthy. Then we have some more golden pothos, hanging baskets. We'll go ahead and turn around and see that there is a um, shipper full of exotic angel plants. This is a snow white waffle plant. So the thing about this plant um, is it does require higher humidity because if it doesn't get the higher humidity, it starts to crisp up. Mine is doing okay. I wouldn't say it was as perfect as when I first bought it. I definitely know that it just needs a little bit more humidity. Here's one of my favorite plants, the aluminum plant right here. This is for four, 548. Um, by Costa Farms. I ended up getting one of these actually for $6.99, a much larger one at Kroger's grocery store. I love me some aluminum plants or what you call a polia plant just because of the silver um, foliage and color. And then we have a ficus pumila right over here. Um, this is what you would call a, cre a variegated creeping ficus. Nice looking one. Obviously, if it's a ficus, it's gonna need a lot of bright indirect light, but look at how beautiful that variegation is. Now, plant foldies, as you've seen a lot of my daily plant videos, um, are you more partial to variegated plants or do you appreciate um, green plants? I'm really curious, so please let me know in the comments below or in the live premiere chats. And here is a great a plant find, a Manjula pothos or an Epipremnum arium Manjula pothos. Not a bad looking one as well. There is some browning on the leaves, but for $5.48, this is not bad at all. So if you are um, checking out Walmarts and looking for a Manjula pothos, definitely do that just because it looks like um, Costa Farms is actually releasing Manjula pothos on these uh, shippers for exotic angels. I didn't realize that um, Manjula pothos are actually a little bit more uncommon in some parts of the country. So that's just interesting. And then we have a purple passion plant here. Mine is doing very well. Um, it's definitely looking very beautiful. I love, love, love the velvet leaves and just the purple of it. And we can go ahead and take a look at this right here. We've got a gold dust croton. 
Um, my gold dust croton unfortunately started dropping its leaves, so I ended up returning it. Um, it it's one of those cro you know plants that it's very finicky. I think I overwatered it and it just wasn't happy, so I had to let it go. And then right over here we have a Syngonium berry illusion for 548. Cost of farms exotic angels. And do you notice how that that's a starter plug right there? It's kind of popping out. So it's really interesting the mass production that Costa Farms does for these exotic angels. They have those little two inch plug starters and then they stick them in like a three inch um, planter like this. Um, I do like this and this is a Rex Begonia. I'm actually considering getting this specific Rex Begonia because I do love the metallic look about it and then just the black and gray foliage. Very nice looking one. Of the three Rex begonias I've gotten from a local plant nursery, all, all three of them except one are doing very well. Just remember that with Rex begonias, you don't want to water the stems or the leaves or they'll crisp up. And then we have a mini Fetonia, a white Fetonia right over here five, by, for 548. And again, if you are a new um, viewer or just watching this channel, please don't forget to subscribe the channel. I noticed when I was looking at my YouTube analytics, a lot of my views are not coming from subscribers. And I would really love for you guys to be stay, you know, to stay up to date with my daily plant videos. I typically make plant videos um, that last about an hour a day, and we have a live premiere chat. Um, I do have a plant foldy community, or that's what I call the um, subscribers to my channel. So if you can, please hit the subscribe button um, smash the like button it really does help um, promote this channel and get us to grow our community but as you can see I have been showing you guys a lot of these exotic angels there's not really a lot to see at this Walmart I do appreciate that they do have some plants at least and they have a couple of plants that are clearance but I do want to walk over here and show you how beautiful this philodendron cordatum lemon lime is I do like the heart um, half moon variegation here and we will see if I can propagate that. The next stop we're gonna have is a grocery store um, called Kroger's. It's a local plant, um, or a local grocery store in McKinney, or not McKinney, Frisco, Texas, off of Custer Road. This is one that I often frequent. This is actually the night before Valentine's evening and you can see that they, they were so packed with a lot of blooming plants like Kalanchoe. Gotta love some Kalanchoe. And if you didn't know, Kalanchoe are actually succulents. These are for $7.99. And we've got a ton of indoor azaleas right here. Azalea simsii is the, the Latin um, word for the, the indoor azalea. I love it. Love azalea. Um, in Japan, they call them suji. Or, and they have satsuki azalea. They've been hybridized to where you can make them into bonsai. This one is for $16.99. And my plant folies, in case you didn't know, I actually love doing bonsai as well. Um, I actually started out doing bonsai before um, house plants. So that's something I will show you guys at the end of this video. So make sure to stay tuned and see what kind of bonsai I make. But as you can see, azalea simsii, these are beautiful um, azaleas. And I definitely want to get one. Kroger has some good pricing. Nicholson Hardy probably has the best um, indoor azalea. They have the tree forms. So Nicholson Hardy is actually a local plant nursery. And we can look over here. That is a beautiful anthurium. We've got some Kalia lilies right over here. And as you can see with grocery stores, they are typically inundated with lots of blooming plants because the house plants are actually considered the floral department. And I'm just curious to see if a lot of people will buy these azaleas. And I'm curious to see after Valentine's if they will clearance them out. Because if they do, I will definitely buy a couple of indoor azalea. That's something that's been on my bucket list. I know for our um, houseplants um, collectors, I don't really see a lot of people actively looking for blooming plants to put in their um, house. But I do think that they would be a nice addition if you're going to bring, say, a Philanopsis orchid, like for instance, right over here, or an indoor azalea, a calanchoe, a begonia, definitely give your flowering plants a lot of light. They need to either be near a bright window or a grow light, just because when you think about um, blooming plants, it takes a lot of energy from the from the plant to actually produce bloom. So just FYI on that, I have to do a little bit more research though on my indoor azalea plant care before I get one. 
And then right over here, we've got tons and tons of beautiful flowers and bouquets. I actually just want to show you guys um, these bouquets just because flowers just put people in a good mood. And my videos are meant to connect people, to give you guys a positive and safe um, space to talk about plants and just to connect people and, you know, make sure that all of our community is welcomed here. Um, right over here, we have a Peperomia raisinette. Doesn't it look like raisins, guys? So at Kroger's, they actually have most of their plants sourced out from a um, place called Mason Farms, which is based out in New Mexico. And then most of their Philanopsis orchids are actually um, sourced from a California grower. So it's really interesting where a lot of the plants come from. Obviously, Costa Farms is based in Florida, and you'll see a lot of like Costa Farms plants um, being sourced. Um, but look at this beautiful philodendron heteraceum brazil i do love the natural le um, leaf shine it has as well nice looking planter um, i am more confident about growing hanging basket plants i think they are a nice addition to a space and i'm hoping guys my plant foldies that i will be able to give you a beautiful house plant tour of my home someday we will see um, there's so many things I want to do with the channel, um, but I do appreciate you guys again every single night. We have an amazing um, live premiere chat. So if you're new and watching the, these videos for the first time, I typically um, schedule live premieres where I'm usually on. Actually, I have never not been on and I can chat with you guys. You can ask me a lot of questions. But as you can see right here at Kroger's, we have tons and tons of orchids, Philanopsis orchids. This is something that I would definitely add to my collections. I may add a Philanopsis orchid and definitely a Vanda orchid, but you can see there are some beautiful Jade Pothos. This one's for $9.99 in a six inch planter. I would say $9.99 for a six inch planter of Pothos is a very good deal. Typically they're about like $16.99. And then this is a 10.99 Enjoy Pothos. Look at how beautiful that variegation is. Oftentimes, these will be called pearls and jade, but you can see that there's very distinct contrast between the green and the white variegation. So just FYI on Enjoy's Pothos. Really like that as well. I do like the jade pothos. Any pothos are very easy um, to grow. And if you are beginning house plants, I would recommend any pothos. And then right over here, we have another beautiful Hoya Carnosa. So for my plant foldies, I love Hoyas. Can you believe that Kroger, a local um, grocery store carries Hoyas? I have um, two Hoyas so far in my plant collection and I would love to add some more. Um, I did want to pan over here. Hopefully you guys did have a great Valentine's Day, but look at how cool these roses are displayed in propagation stations. This one's for $19.99. That's a really clever idea. So if you have a Valentine that likes plants, once the roses um, die, you can actually use it as a propagation station. I think it's really cool. I love roses as well. Um, it's something that I used to have. I used to have a rose garden where it's mostly variegated. So my plant foldies, I have um, older content of some of my gardening videos. I may put a compilation and just kind of pepper that into my big box store plant shopping videos. I know you guys are mostly here for the big box stores, but I want to branch out and I hope you guys allow me to create more diverse content. And hopefully you guys will push these videos by hitting the like button and subscribing. But look at how beautiful these roses are. I love roses and I've actually been successful at drying roses um, from years back. So um, that's something I will show you on how to do as well, just to preserve your roses. But look at how beautiful this rose is right here. Love the um, the margins and ed the edging, the pink edging of it. And I've been told that you can actually propagate roses from a bouquet. So that's something I would love to know. So if plant foldies, you've ever done that, let me know. But let's go ahead and break out and do another commercial break. So on all of my videos, I have been showing you guys how to make in origami paper crane. So for my newer subscribers, my channel is called Grow Folds. The grow part is the plant side of the channel and then the folds was actually about my origami. So origami is a traditional Japanese form of making um, beautiful forms of like different types of shapes, animals, flowers using a square sheet of paper. Um, I learned how to uh, fold origami at a very young age. I think I was like five years old or something like that. Taught myself actually how to make origami. And for the past seven years, I have been folding origami paper cranes 
in the hopes of someday folding one million paper cranes. So this is part of my daily routine alongside making some awesome, you know, plant content for, um, for my plant foldies. But as you can see, this is super easy. Um, if you want to learn how to make an origami paper crane, you just have to scroll down my older vi videos. They're very slow motion um, tutorials, so you can definitely learn how to do that. And I hope that my plant foldies and my viewers will learn how to make origami paper cranes. There is um, a point where you can actually send origami paper cranes to Hiroshima in Japan as a peace offering. Um, I might actually get a bunch of our subscribers to possibly try and donate that. I'm really trying to make that community for you, but here you guys go. Look at that origami paper crane. And now we are actually looking at a local plant nursery um, called Callaway's. So if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Callaway's is basically a local chain of plant nurseries all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area. They are all over Dallas and it's one of the best nurseries just because they provide so many plants, um, different types of plants. They've got a large um, tropical indoor selection and they definitely have a lot of outdoor um, landscaping selections too. I originally found Callaways because I was buying my Japanese maples from Callaways. But as you can see right here, this is a beautiful afternoon, Sunday afternoon, where I am just going to film these beautiful bromeliads. And look at this right here. Look, this bromeliad has like three different types of bromeliads. I've never seen the one with the white. I love bromeliads. I just don't know if I could grow bromeliads um, just because of the space constraints I have at my home. I don't know if you guys have that situation where you're like, you want to have all the plants, right? Plant foldies, you know, you want to have all these plants. Next thing you know, you have over a hundred plants and then you're overwhelmed with the plant chores of the watering, the inspecting for pests. When do you actually have time to sit down and actually just enjoy the plants? And I will share you my story where I was really into plant collecting house plants and this was even before the pandemic in 2020 where everybody just started getting plants. Um, I was just bringing in plants left and right. Honestly, I am actually over capacity now because I bought so many plants and I definitely need to do something about it. But anyways, when you bring plants in, you just have to make sure that you have the space. I can't um, tell you enough how important it is to make sure you have the space the lighting conditions, the watering, the care tips, and then just the time investment to make sure that you enjoy your plants. I'm a big um, supporter and advocate for letting plants bring you joy versus letting plants bring you stress. So just, you know, a little ramble about that as we shop at this um, Callaway's. You can see these beautiful crane um, decorations. I wanted to pan over there. Um, I definitely want to probably get one of those um, cranes to put in my, my landscaping. And that's, I will have future videos when my maples and my cherry blossoms start to bloom. I will show you some of my outdoor garden. But you can see right here, we have a beautiful ficus elastica ruby. And then right over here, we have a ficus benhelenesis, benhelenesis, benjelenesis, bunghelenesis, however you um, pronounce it. Um, apparently, this one can tolerate lower light conditions. I don't know. I don't really believe that just because I feel like ficus all need bright indirect light. This is by Proven Winners where you typically see this more so at Home Depot. And then right over here, we have a ficus elastica shivriana. Um, the, this one is a beautiful looking ficus as well. I do like the green on green variegation. Um, I am partial to that, but you can see that right over here, we are going to be looking at some assorted aglonemas. I love Callaway's aglonemas just because they have these colorful ones for $12.99 in four inch planters. Look at how beautiful the pink is right here. I just wish they would have the same plant IDs for each one, but it looks like they just come in in an assortment. I'm not complaining because as long as they have aglonemas to choose from, that's awesome. So I have been collecting a lot of aglonemas from Callaway's. I think they have a fair price. And again, with Callaway's, the risk of losing your money is pretty much minimal because they have a, such a great program where if your plant dies or you're not satisfied, they will return your plant no questions asked as long as you bring the dead plant and you're part of their garden rewards program. So I have um, done that before, not often, but I do like that just because sometimes plants just don't end up loving us as much as we want to love them. 
Um, I do like this Aglonema. I'm not sure if I have this one. They all look fairly sim similar, but the thing about Aglonemas are they have very distinct characteristics that separate them apart. Sometimes this plant might have yellow, I mean not yellow, pink stems or darker pink stems or white stems. I love um, Aglonema that have white stems actually, but look at how beautiful that is. Um, if you are a new houseplant um, person and you want to grow houseplants, I would highly recommend Aglonema. They're so easy to grow. All you have to do is make sure you do not overwater them and they can tolerate lower light conditions. Right over here, we do have some palm. These will not tolerate lower light conditions, but look at this. I just love just staring at all of these plants. Like, look at this ponytail palm right over here for $49.99 in a 10-inch planter. I feel very fortunate to be able to go to Callaway's um, on a consistent basis. There's so many within a 10-minute radius from where I'm based, and so I'm super excited about that. And I am thankful that the employees um, don't give me a hard time when it comes to you know, filming content for you plant foldies. Sometimes big box stores, I have to be really careful about how I, um, I, I film. I never wanna make anybody feel uncomfortable. So as you notice, even though I am filming, you will never really see anybody in the background and I try not to get employees at all, just for the you know sake of privacy. I, don't, I wouldn't want somebody, you know, video blogging and putting me on content that I, I was not aware of. Um, I love the Raffis Palm. This one's for $16.99. Now, Raffis Palm get extremely large. And this palm, from what I've heard, and maybe you can correct me, is it can actually tolerate lower light conditions. I might need to um, fact check myself on that, but somebody told me these Raffis Palm can um, tolerate lower light conditions. So that's good for a palm. And then we have right over here a peace lily domino. So this is a variegated peace lily. I love peace lilies. Um, they're very easy to grow. This one is for $16.99. And um, I have a lot of Canadian plant foldies that view my channel. Did you know that a lot of these plants are actually sourced out from Canada? If it's not from Florida, California, these plants are actually sourced out from Canada. So I'm really curious why, um, you know, our Canadian viewers are saying they don't have the selection. You guys have the plants or at least the nurseries that are sourcing out to, you know, of all places, Dallas, Texas. So that's just really interesting. Now, this is a Norfolk pine um, that I would want to show you guys. And you know what's interesting? This is actually by Garden Expert. This is a Walmart plant, so I'm not sure how Callaway's ended up getting a Walmart plant. I don't know if there was like a surplus of um, Norfolk pine, but it looks like um, Callaway's, and I've seen it in multiple nurseries, have um, Norfolk pine. Um, a lot of people think it looks more like Christmassy, but honestly, as a Norfolk pine gets larger, it changes its leaf size to where it looks a little bit more like a tropical plant. Um, I am not really familiar on how to grow Norfolk pine. All I know is during Christmas and the holidays, you will see them left and right and people use them as like ornamental Christmas trees. And right over here, we have a philodendron cellum. Um, that's a beautiful looking one. I always confuse this as like a tamathophyllum, but I'm just going by the plant ID of this one. Um, this is a beautiful looking plant and it is priced at $49.99. Not a bad looking um, plant at all. And I do like that it's um, just just the, 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 the leaf shape is really nice. And then right over here, we have a, Sh a Shiflera Amate. I do like this. This is probably my favorite umbrella or Shiflera of all the Shifleras just because of the plant. And now I'm not 100% sure um, what the care tips are for this, but I do like that it does get large. I wish I had the space in my home to be able to put that. And then right over here, we have some Ficus Ali um, in a tree form. Look at that, beautiful looking Ficus Ali. It's interesting how we have like Ficus Benjamina, Ficus Ali, Ficus Lyrata. These are what you would call like the house plant trees that you can grow indoors. Like look at that fiddle fig leaf or ficus lyrata. All of these um, fiddle fig leaf or ficus plants right, that we're looking at though need a lot of bright indirect light. So please be mindful when you are buying plants that these are um, plants that require a lot of bright light. Otherwise, they're gonna bring you more stress because they will drop their leaves. And you can see the price is $79.99 for this beautiful ficus lyrata right here. I do like how it's really compact as well. 
I, I have one. I used to have a large one, but I just didn't give it the right care care tips. So that's another thing. Um, you know, a couple of years back, back in 2019, 2020, I just went overboard with plants and I just bought so many that I got a gnat infestation, a mealybug infestation, a spider mite infestation. And I was spending a lot of money buying like sprays to do that, that I ended up actually just becoming very unhappy with plants. So now I'm just really excited that I have been able to create my plant collection and bring it back and share my journey daily with you guys and just to talk about plants but um, that's the thing as much as you know some of you guys have said that you've been inspired to buy plants because of the videos that i'm showing just be cognizant about like your space i, I can't stress enough and i know that i've pretty much talked about that a lot during this video but it just got me thinking about as our community grows i want to make sure that i am setting sending a positive message about plants but also making sure that we don't add stress on each other by just buying plants because we saw a wish list plant or the plant was available at walmart definitely look at your space um, plant foley's let me know what you guys think in the comments i know that i've been really talking a lot about plants uh, and just you know making sure that you take a hold of your collection um, and also in the live premiere chats you know shout out to my canadian plant foldies and in everybody that has recently joined the chats um, again i didn't realize after looking at my youtube analytics that a lot of my viewers are still not subscribed so if you haven't already or if it's your first time and you like this type of content where i do you know local plant nursery tours shopping tours plant care tips um, please hit the subscribe button and more likely just leave a comment and hit the like button that really helps me out um, i'm definitely going broke guys and you know like because of all of this plant shopping videos but it is such a fun process to do so and as you can see you've seen a lot of those dracaenas i always say this dracaenas are so underrated and look at this this is just gorgeous i just love soaking in the plants at um, Callaway's Nursery. This one is specifically off of 121 Highway 121 in Custer and is one of the best locations. The, the employees are super friendly and it's such a large um, Callaway's as well. This one is another Ficus Elastica Burgundy. Love me some rubber trees. I have one that has dropped its leaves, but I'm hoping come springtime I can bring it out, trim it up and try to promote some more like tree-like growth on it. But I do want to do something different today and actually walk through the outdoor sections of Callaway's. I often um, focus a lot on just the indoor plants, specifically philodendrons and aeroids, but with spring around and maybe even different types of um, plant lovers, maybe you might like flowers. I love flowers. Um, I remember growing flowers from seeds, specifically um, marigolds when I was a kid and zinnia. So we're going to just take a look at some of these outdoor plants. Hopefully you stick around to the end of the video because there is a really cool video that I inserted that you might not have um, expected from me. So stay tuned for that. Um, I do want to show you these miniature roses. These ones are for $9.99. Look at how cute they are. Um, I want to get a variegated miniature rose. Um, I've asked the same question. Do you think that you can grow miniature roses in a landscape? Is that something that people do or do they just grow these in pots? Um, let me know what you think. Do you have success growing indoor roses um, or miniature roses indoors? I just am curious just because I know that as much as roses are beautiful, they are very much aphid prone and they can get a lot of ty different types of pests. That's kind of what killed my beautiful variegated roses collection is because of pests. But yes, I do want to walk over here and just show you a couple more plants. I do love these. Look at these petunias. But look at how hybridized this petunia is. Look at that pinwheel looking petunia. I love that it's yellow and um, purple. Yellow and purple, if you are into art, is actually the um, a complete contrast or opposite side of the color wheel. So that's really cool. And then we have some marigolds here. I love marigolds. Don't over fertilize them. Otherwise, it will produce more um, um, foliage versus just green flowers. And then look at this really cool peacock. 
look at this this is so cute now i definitely don't think i would add this to my landscape it wouldn't fit my japanese garden i definitely want to get like the the cranes uh, instead but um, we've been talking about Riger begonia, but look at this. These are some flowering begonias as well. Now, these are meant to be outdoors. Um, they are planted as like, you know, flower beds, but look at how cool this is. This is in a hanging basket, and I do like the dark foliage of these plants. We've got a red one, we've got a, um, some white, and then we've got some pink, and then we've got some darker pink. This is a nice looking hanging basket. I'm curious to see what the care tips would be like for this type of begonia and if these begonias could be used to hybridize begonias like a begonia macolata or rex begonia so just really interesting i recently found the dallas begonia society on instagram and added them i'm hoping that i can participate or join them as well because i am getting into all sorts of plants so plant foldies um stay tuned for that i'm gonna go pan over here and look at all of this there's just so many plants to look at at callaways I'm gonna go walk over here and look at these ornamental kale. So it is, um, you know, ornamental kale are very much frost hardy, very cold tolerant. A lot of these varieties are actually from Japan and these are edible. I don't know if you really wanna eat these, but look at how beautiful the, um, the color of these ornamental kale are they're very subtle i love the lavenders the purples the dark purples i actually like um purple in plants as well as much as i like red and pink plants purple and dark black plants are awesome and look at this right here look at this beautiful spider plant this spider plant has shot out so many babies that you can literally just cut these off and propagate and create you a new one callaways is actually a good source to find an amazing hanging basket full of spider plants this one unfortunately has some crisping so like that's the thing about spider plants how do you prevent it from crisping brown and then we have some ferns right over here hanging baskets of ferns now if you have a mosquito problem growing citronella plants um, would be really cool. So they're selling citronella plants and if you are near if you were actually here You can smell how strong the citronella um, scent is and then we have some more jasmine right over here. Love um, the yellow um, flowers and Tomatoes, we've got a lot of starter tomatoes right over here I'm thinking about growing some vegetables this year and some planters so we will um, see about that but tomatoes and we've got some starter strawberry plants right over here as well gotta love that and um, look at the bloom i thought strawberry blooms were usually white these ones are pink so they're really cute and we're gonna walk over here and look at all of these beautiful alicium luburaria i don't know how to pronounce that but this is for 24.99 a hanging basket of alicium um, plants really nice looking one um I, I just like showing you guys this right here so plan foldies what do you guys think about callaway's nursery if you are not from the dallas fort worth area when you visit dallas are you considering going to callaway's there's so many nurseries that um i can't even like cover each one like i would love to be able to now the biggest one is actually in the heart of dallas i have yet to go there but that's one that i would love to cover at some point i typically stay out in the north um dallas area just because that's where i am um, stationed at and then we have some helleborus <laughs> helleborus Hele plants look at that right over here their their flowers actually look like more of their foliage or their leaves as well um really like the way these plants look um i i would think that they wouldn't be really green of blooms but that's really cool to see and we have some beautiful primrose right over here look at that um color that those flowers what do you guys think about the flowers do you guys like flowering plants or are you more so like into just like the tropical aeroids i like both honestly i love all plants i love vegetable plants i love flowering plants i love maple trees i love um you know all plants i haven't gotten into succulents as much but that's something that if i started it i'm pretty sure i'm gonna just get into it even more so 
Um, but yeah, so as you can see, Callaway's Nursery has so many plants to choose from. Um, we've got some gardenia right over here. I've tried growing gardenia in the past. They just haven't done as well for me, but when they do flower, they smell so good. And with gardenia, I've seen them being sold at grocery stores as a flowering in um, indoor plant, but I'm not sure if you can really grow them long term. But you see there's one gardenia bloom right over here. They do. They are just like azaleas. They do like acidic soil. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I would be curious to see if anybody has grown a azalea um, successfully indoors as well as a gardenia. And then we're going to walk over here. So it looks like we've got some assorted succulents and more plants here. We've got a bunch of shamrocks on the, on the left oxalis. And then one of my favorites actually has become quickly one of my favorite flowering plants. These are Riger begonia. Look at how beautiful that peach color is. And I would say Callaway's has the best Riger begonia. This one is for $16.99. But again, you, um, I've never grown Riger begonia. So plant foldies and my viewers and subscribers, please let me know what you think, what the care tips are. If you would add this to your, your plant collection, I would recommend it. I prefer the really dark red, but look at these colors right here. I've seen them actually at grocery stores being sold as like a like a floral plant to grow indoors, but I'm not 100% sure if you can grow these indoors long term. I would definitely tell you they need a lot of bright light. Since it's a flowering plant, just remember any flowering or blooming plant will need a lot of light. But that is absolutely stunning. And look at these cranes. Now, this is more of my cup of tea. I would definitely buy this um, you know this crane to add into my garden i think it'd actually be a cool little addition for my japanese garden with my japanese maples um, they are for 99 dollars, so they're a little bit pricey and we are just going to pass by some more flowering plants right over here that is beautiful and then we have some cyclamen right over here um, cyclamen, again, it's one of those plants that I would think really just come out during the colder months of the year, especially during the holidays. Not really sure if they can grow um, indoors long term, but we will we will see. But look at this one right here. I like the variegation of this um, cyclamen. And then this is actually my favorite cyclamen. For some reason, they remind me of Hoya blooms, even though Hoya blooms are very tiny. There's just something about that red and white bloom from the cyclamen that's really cool. Um, I don't really see that at grocery stores. And then even just a traditional red um blooms on this cyclamen is really cool if you look at the leaves closely they have a beautiful heart shape and they've got such a cool variegation on the leaves as well um, so for anybody that's growing cyclamen um, how long have you grown cyclamen please let me know in the comments or even in the live chats are you into cyclamen i love the white um, blooms on this cyclamen as well um, and you know callaways typically has a bunch of these I know that tomorrow is President's Day and they have a 30% off sale. There's always these different types of sales at Callaway's, but you can see how massive this um, outdoor section is for Callaway's is. And since making this YouTube channel where I do plant and shopping videos on the daily, I didn't realize that a lot of parts of the country may not have as big of a selection. So I am very fortunate to live in the North Dallas area where Plants are everywhere. They're at grocery stores, big box stores, and we have amazing local nurseries. Um, Callaway's would be considered a big box um, type a local nursery just because there's so many, it's an actual chain. Um, but I definitely have been supporting Callaway's for several years now, probably been shopping here for about six or seven years. And you can see why. Look at these um, Riger begonia right over here. Beautiful looking plants. You know, I've had a very stressful time at lately with work, just balancing work. Um, you know, I work, I'm a salaried, um, em, you know, employee. So, you know, when you are supervising folks, it can be a little stressful. So um, a lot of people like saying, you know, take your time on the videos, but truthfully pre producing um, YouTube videos for plants have actually become my safe space where it's more of a stress reliever. And even just looking back at all of these plants, look at this. 
there's so many beautiful plants to choose from i definitely want to um, revamp my outdoor space we had a pretty tough um, winter so a lot of my plants outside some of my bushes didn't make it so i'm hoping that i can um, do some landscaping and maybe take you guys along side with me on landscaping please let me know in the comments if you want me to also do outdoor plants or do you want me to just keep it more so indoors um, again i've been giving um, been given a lot of feedback and i do appreciate the feedback so feel free to send me a dm or put in the comments what kind of um, feedback you'd like to give me um i am always open to feedback constructive criticism is great i just don't need bashing so anybody that's going to be negative please um stay away because this is a positive um plant community that we have here um, i am going to show you guys all of these assorted echeveria these are so gorgeous i love the the plants and look at this so many different types of succulents and cactus i don't even know where to begin all i know is i love what how they look um, i bet you'd be really interesting to create a, um, a succulent type arrangement those could be fun and then right over here we have a crown of thorns i saw this at plants and planters for the first time blooming that's another local plant nursery that i've made videos of so if you haven't um, seen it yet definitely check it out and then we have a bunch of hoartheas right over here um, places to get good succulents and um, cacti would be walmart they have probably the most cost effective um, plants in terms of su succulents and cacti just fyi but obviously um, Callaway's has a bunch as well for you to purchase if you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area look at that asparagus fern right over here and guys I um, want to make sure that I take the time to edit my videos and get you the plant IDs I've noticed that um, you guys really do like the plant IDs they do take quite a bit of time to put in there but um, a couple of viewers have said the reason why they watch some of my plant videos because there are a lot of plant shopping videos is because of the plant ID so I really appreciate that you guys recognize that I have made um, tried to make my content a little bit different a little bit more about me and just what i um, want to give in terms of my insights and my commentary um, right here is um lit hops or is that how you pronounce it lit hops or what they call um living stones and these are super cool as well i didn't realize that they um actually clump up and create more lipped off so those are really cool and then we have some more tiny echeverias right over here look at the colors and just the different varieties this one right here you can actually propagate if you just snap that cut it off and then put it on soils um, mist it a little bit and it will root that's the thing about um succulents they're so easy to propagate um i don't even know why i haven't even started um, doing succulent content or just even growing them in my collection but today might be the day guys if i add a succulent um today might be a special day just because look at all of these succulents they are definitely enticing me to get them look at this cute little arrangement love the terracotta pot this one is for $19.99 um, that's actually the type of pot I would actually add into my home I love terracotta pots I love the simplicity of it but more so look at how beautiful that arrangement is right over here super stunning I think if I were to get this this would be one that I would bottom water because what I've heard is succulents definitely do not want to sit in water and they definitely don't want their foliage to be wet for a long period of time otherwise they will rot so if you have succulents or are thinking about that make sure you do not overwater them give them bright and direct light full sun is actually best you'll get some really nice sun stressing and what sun stressing means is um you know blasting it with a lot of light and they get like different purples and different types of variegation hi there mr peacock that's really cool and then they have some succulent um cactus mi mix right here um, we've got some Dracaena fragging. So with Dracaenas, um, they can tolerate lower light conditions, but can also tolerate high light conditions. So that's really cool. And then right over here, we have a bunch of Desert Rose. Really like Desert Rose. This one is a pink one right here. Um, I've had a Desert Rose bonsai before, and this one is for $12.99. Uh, some ad adeniums, is, I think that's how you pronounce it. And then we have some more um, succulents and cacti right over here. All of these are really cool um, succulent arrangements, very good looking ones. So if you already want an instant one, Callaway's Nursery has them ready for you. And I did want to show you guys this. This is super cool. 
look at these sunstress string of hearts if they got more purples and like silver tone about it hopefully i'm think i'm I, i'm looking at a string of hearts correct me if i'm wrong if it is not a string of hearts i do apologize but nonetheless i do like that um it's got purple and silver tones to it these are for $24.99 um there's a bunch of them on here and um even the top is not uh bear i like that a lot because sometimes when you find string of anything um you know just any type of string of whatever the the top part tends to get bare as it starts to to do that so it's cool that they wrapped out some of their um their their strings on top to keep it more full i really do like that i would love to add that the only succulent type i have is a wax ivy that is growing under um, a grow light and it's actually um sun stressing so i'll show you that as well but look at how beautiful this um plant looks like right over here absolutely stunning string of um something i don't know if this is string of hearts let me know in the comments below if it's not um so i'm not going to put the plant id because i don't want to give you guys the wrong plant id but it does look like a string of hearts not 100 percent sure it could be something else so plant foldies in the live chat or even in the comments please let me know but i did want to show you that those are for 24.99 and then right over here, we have a string of turtles, peperomia, uh, or I think that's what it is, um, string of turtles. And you can see that it's super cute. I like it a lot. I will definitely think about getting one of those as well. And then we're going to pass by over here. So they've got a lot of succulent type um, containers you can put your succulents in. Honestly, I would use Akadama for um, Akadama soil for that. And then we have a bunch of... Um, more hanging baskets right over here of string of turtles actually these are very lush look at that super full and lush and these are for $24.99 that is not a bad price at all and look at how beautiful they are just starting to trail they look like jewelry i really think that's super cool and look at this this one is super full would you buy this string of um turtles i think i would if i was in the market for that but right now I am not, although today might be the day I actually add a succulent into my collection. I passed by some succulent that I thought was really interesting, but I didn't get it on film first, but I can show you this right here. Isn't that gorgeous? And then right over here, we have some large um, euphorbia. This one is a pencil cactus, um, really nice looking one. And then we have a Rick Rack um cactus for $24.99 um this is a hanging basket i will sometimes see at big box stores as well and we have a teardrop peperomia some more pencil cactus euphorbias nice looking right there those are actually really large as well and then right over here we have another um pepper pep peperomia teardrop those are cool and then we have some more string of um turtles right over here I just think that these are so gorgeous. And then we're gonna pan over here and I will show you some more of these assorted cactus and succulents, but we're gonna make our way back inside. Um, uh, hopefully you guys have liked the outdoor section, but we will focus again on the in indoor plants. But let me show you this. Look at this right here. I love um, f um, flowering um, trees. This one is um, general fruit trees. So fruit trees are actually sometimes grown not for the fruits, but for the spring blooms because look at these. These are pretty much like cherry blossoms. So I have two peach trees, one regular peach tree, one variegated um, peach tree. And um, I cannot wait to show you the cherry blossom looking blooms um, this spring once they come out. Um, so we will see what that looks like, but let us go ahead and walk back inside and take a look at all the other plants they have indoors do you see how massive this plant nursery is and what i love about it is it's never too crowded and i do typically do my filming actually not on the weekends during the weekdays this happens to be a slower sunday though but look at this this is a really cool jade plant i love jade plants but this one is um not a bad price at all for $29.99. It's already a pretty established one. I do like the smaller foliage on it, so it kind of lends itself to bonsai. And look at that cute crane. I think I need to get that crane right there. I love the white, but look at this right here. They've trained it to where it looks like a heart. So $24.99 in the shallow planter right over here. It looks like a heart. Yep, 
it is a heart and it's just really cool that they got it to train that shape i'm pretty sure it took a minute for you know actually not a minute it took a while for that to to grow but look at this right here i just wanted to show you that this one's for 29.99 not a bad looking one. I wouldn't add that to my collection though. I think it's slightly cheesy, but it's also cute. I'm not sure, but look at that. These are beautiful. And I love that this particular jade is ve has very small um, leaves. So I like that a lot. It does lend itself to bonsai. And I have been inkling to um, do bonsai again. I missed the process of making bonsai and look at this massive um, crane right over here. I really like that as well. And then right over here, we have some pre-bonsai. Oh my gosh, and these are variegated. These are $12.99, and these are variegated dwarf bonsai, um, pre-bonsai. So these are actually plants that can be created into bonsai. So like basically, you can wire them up, train them up. And then for my plant foldies or anybody that has never heard of bonsai, bonsai is a Japanese form of putting a plant, typically a tree, into a shallow pot and training it and you know making a different form so i love that they sell pre-bonsai material here um yeah so i'm gonna definitely get one today that is a definite um the fact that it's a jade plant and it's also variegated and there's already a bonsai pre-bonsai i have a couple of bonsai pots and i do have some bonsai soil i definitely am gonna get one today i just need to find one that has really good branching so whenever you're looking for bonsai material you want to look for branching that's lower too just because that's where you get the focal point and the power of the tree and just lots of branches to work with um I know that if I buy one today, it's going to be a long process in terms of wiring and shaping it, but look at how cute these are. Um, I definitely think that would be a unique bonsai just because you don't see a lot of jade bonsai out there. There, are, There is a specific guy on um, Instagram that has bonsai. I'll have to find his account and um, share that with you all. But as you can see, we have a bunch of starter plants as well right over here. As you guys can see, there is a two inch planter of string of hearts variegated. Look at how cute that is. That's for $9.99. I'm actually thinking about getting a small string of hearts and seeing if I could just let it trail, grow and propagate and create like a full hanging basket. So we will see, but I do like the fact that um, they actually have some more pre bonsai material right over here. This one's got a lot of roots actually. Um, super cool. I love that. Um, you know, Callaway sells starter plants, and I really think a lot of these starter plants are actually what you use for like exotic angel plants that are put into like three inch pots. I definitely wanna buy this today. This is a strawberry begonia for $2.99. Not a bad looking one. I've seen these on like Etsy being sold for like $9.99, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that. Just let it grow up and eventually propagate from it as well. But I do like that strawberry begonia. I'm gonna pan over here and just show you guys even more video footage of these plants. And we're gonna walk over here and I'm gonna show you some African violets. The one that I gravitate to the most is obviously the variegated African violet here. Look at that. And these ones are for $9.99. That's not a bad price at all for an African violet. Um, definitely consider getting one of these african violets i have one that's growing for me successfully so far so super excited to be able to grow my collection of african violets and then we have right over here some philodendron ring of fires these are for um, 29.99 not a bad looking um, ring of fire but the one i got um, from growers bench at walmart um, is actually a better deal i ended up getting it for 24.98 so Slightly different, but my um, ring of fire is actually a lot larger. And then right over here, they have some philodendron white princess on a pole. And you can see how large the leaves are when you allow a philodendron to grow up a pole. And then right over here, we've got some gorgeous um, philodendron summer glory. These are for $19.99. I like how summer glory has like a faint brown caramel um, color of the new leaves that come around. I do want to show you guys more of these starter plants here. Look at this variegated string of hearts. Beautiful looking ones for $2.99. And we have some more starter plants right over here. I want to get this one particularly, this strawberry begonia. 
I don't think it's a bad price for $2.99 for a starter plant. And look at how beautiful that variegation is. I also like the very distinct pink outline on the outer edges of the leaf. And then we have some Hoya carii hearts right over here, some Sansevieria snake plants, and all of this beautiful pre bonsai jade. So definitely excited that i will be adding a succulent into my collection of plants today i just happen to need you know i need to just be selective of which one i will get i'm going to pay for the 12.99 ones those are a little bit more established um and then you know whenever you're looking for a pre-bonsai material a material that you want to make into a bonsai look for the lower branching look for an apex which is basically the top of the tree like i'm thinking of getting this one right here because look at that there is a nice triangular shape about it so we will see if i end up getting that one but that was the one i was going to consider getting um, but I do like that they um, have small leaves, so it's already basically ready for the um, for it to become a bonsai. Obviously, I'm going to wire it and train it, but just to get it into the initial shallow pot will be really cool. And then obviously, I can't not have a shopping video and not show you guys some hanging baskets of some beautiful Epipremnum Arium Marble Queen Pothos. Um, I did a poll and it's interesting that you plant Foley said that Marble Queen Pothos is your favorite pothos of, um, you know, between a neon pothos and enjoy pothos, a golden pothos. Y'all like the um, Marble Queen pothos. And then right over here, we have some Philodendron Brazils in a four inch planter. Love the variegation of this one as well. I do think that Philodendron Brazil is a little bit underrated of a plant as well. Honestly, it's such a cool looking plant. Look at that, especially when it's in a hanging basket. I don't see why people wouldn't want to grow Philodendron um, Brazils. Very easy and they are easy to propagate. You can multiply them. And we've got some cool looking planters actually available. And then right over here, we have a Philodendron um, Imperial Red. These ones are not a bad price at all. For $29.99, you get a large Philodendron like this. Love dark foliage plants. And then we have um, a silver medium um, Amidrium for $39.99. Now these, you definitely need to grow up a pole for it to actually mature and grow those fenestrations. We're passing by a bunch of ZZ plants. Love me some ZZ plants, very easy. And then we have some Sansevieria shark um, fins. That's what it is. I thought it was a whale fin, but it's a shark fin, or that's what they're calling it here. This is for $24.99. I think those are super cool as well. And we've got some Fernwood Sansevierias, one of my favorite Sansevierias for $16.99. It's easy to grow. Um, and if you want to start out with a snake plant, that's one I would recommend. But look at these massive staghorn ferns, guys. Look at this. This one is for um, $29.99. That is not bad at all. It's super large. That is a huge staghorn fern. Not a bad price at all for a hanging basket of staghorn fern. And then right over here, we have some Philodendron White Princess. But I did want to just pan over here. It looks like there are a lot of different types of staghorn ferns. Some of them are in crates. And this one is a Tillandsia or air plant right here. Love that. This one is for $100 or $99. Look at that. That is absolutely stunning as well. I love how it's got this gray, almost like stone-like look about it. And I'm going to pan over here and show you guys that there's some more ferns. Um, I just like all of the beautiful plants. They have a Callaways. I could spend hours in here, but today we're only going to spend a good 45 minutes to an hour looking at all of these plants. And you can see they've got some Calatheas right over here. Now, I am not afraid about buying Calathea from um, Callaways just because, again, they have a really good return policy. If they don't do well for you, you can always return to Calathea, um, no questions asked, as long as you have your receipt and you are part of the garden club member and you bring the dead plant or the plant that you're not really satisfied with. So really love that about Callaways. And right over here, we've got some more Syngonium. So Syngoniums used to be my favorite plant, but what I've noticed about Syngoniums is if you do underwater them, they become a little bit more susceptible to um, pests like spider mites and mealybugs. So they kind of downgraded a little bit from Aglonema. What I like about Syngoniums is that they're easy to propagate and multiply. So, you know, they're an easy to care for plant. You definitely need to give it bright indirect. Like, but look at how beautiful this Calathea, um, 
um, medallion is right over here. Um, they kind of look like Calathea Makayanas, but um, Callaway's has some good quality Calathea too. Um, what else do we have here? I'm just going to pan over some more plants. And that's the thing about local plant nursery shopping. You get a variety of plants and you get plants that are super healthy. Like, look at this. This is a beautiful maiden hair fern. This one is only for $16.99, but look at how lush and full this is. Now, just remember with any ferns, specifically maiden hair fern, you have to provide it a lot of um, humidity. Can we say how gorgeous this uh, Monstera Thai constellation looks? This is absolutely gorgeous and it has become very much easily accessible for anybody to find a Monstera Thai constellation, whether it's in a big box store or a local plant nursery. This one is another type of fern. I love how it has heart-shaped leaves for $16.99. I don't know the plant ID for this, but that's super cool as well. Absolutely stunning looking fern. And they just have an assortment of ferns all over. They've got some hanging baskets of black rabbit foot fern. You see this often sold by um, Costa Farms and big box stores. This one's for $29.99. Um, my plant foldies or any viewers that are watching the channel right now, do you guys grow fern? What do you like about fern? Let me know in the comments below or in the live chat. And if you are just um, joining in, please don't forget to hit the like button and also make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. I was really surprised how many people viewed the channel but are not subscribed. So please make sure you guys are hitting the subscribe button if you like this type of content. And then right over here, we passed by a bunch of zebra plants, but we also have an assortment of alocasias. This one is alocasia tiny dancer. Um, that's a really cute looking alocasia. And then we have another alocasia right over here for $14.99. This is an alocasia silver dragon. Mine is doing very well in its self-watering planters. I think alocasia do very well in self-watering planters because it takes away from the guessing game of overwatering or underwatering the plant. Um, for my Hoya plant fans right here, the ones that love Hoyas, here is some Hoya um, Quintianas for $29.99 in a 6-inch planter. Some The other one right over there actually looks like it's been sun-stressed. This one is a Hoya Retusa. Very delicate looking leaves. I don't know if I would really grow a Hoya Retusa. They're a little too delicate for me. And then we have some variegated um, Hoya Macrophyllums right over here. Nice looking Hoya. This one is for $29.99. Hopefully you guys like these Hoyas. I love them as well. Um, my Hoya so far doing great. And then this one right here is a, um, a Hoya Trellis, a Hoya Publiculix. I think that's how you pronounce it. This one's for $29.99 in a trellis right here. Yeah, this is a Hoya Publiculix right here. That's not a bad looking one. And the speckles are not um, dust. It's actually the actual variegation of the plant. And then we have a bunch of Hoya Carii variegated versions of that right here. That's really cool. The only thing is, and since it wasn't propagated with a, a node, it's always going to just be that heart. And then we have a bunch of Hoya Compactas right here for $19.99 in a 4-inch planter. That's a little bit pricey considering you can find a full hanging basket of Hoya Compacta for $19.98. And then we have another large um, Monstera Thai constellation here. Gotta love some Monstera Thai constellation. I love mine. I have been growing mine for a good four years and it has grown massive in my care. I do have a couple of them in propagation as well. And then we're gonna pan over here. Look at those cute flamingos. I love the planters actually that they have them in that series of planters, but look at this Riger begonia. I think red Riger begonia blooms are the best. Look at how like fiery red it is. Super cool. I am curious to see how long Riger begonia blooms last or do they rebloom all year long? Um, and then we have some indoor hydrangea or that's what they're being marketed as is um, indoor hydrangea right over here. Gotta love hydrangea. It's interesting, the more uh, um, acidity the soil is, it can change the color of a hydrangea. I wish I could grow hydrangea in my landscape. I haven't been able to successfully grow one in my landscape, but check this out. This one is for $499 for this 
really massive um, Monstera Thai constellation. That's actually not a bad price considering some places are selling them in the thousands. Um, if I didn't already have a Monstera Thai constellation about this size, I would definitely buy it. The variegation is actually really stable. It's super healthy. Like look at how beautiful that leaf is. And it's a good price. $499 for this is not a bad price at all. And if you're going to get 30% off um, President's Day, that's a big chunk of money you would save. I might actually try to get it. Just kidding. I don't need another large plant and I don't have space for a plant like that. But that is a super cool looking plant. A lot of my plants are actually growing under um, underneath my Monstera Thai constellation. And then right over here, we have a bunch of um, Ficus Elastica Burgundies. We've got a beautiful Aglonema Madonna right over here. Nice looking one. I love Aglonema um, Golden Madonna just because of the white stems. I like white stem Aglonema. I think they're so cool. And this one can actually get really large as well. I do have one that I got from Plant Keeper Incorporated. And if you see right over here, we've got an Epipremnum Panatum Albo Variegata um, growing up a totem. So we first saw a bunch of totems at Plant Keeper Incorporated, which is another local plant nursery in Dallas. I have a couple of videos featuring that, but it's cool that even um, these types of nurseries are starting to carry totems of plants. This is a really cool Monstera Adansonii for $16.99. That's actually a pretty full one too. Not a bad price for it as well. And then we are gonna see a bunch of um, Thai constellations in a second, but look at this um, totem right here. This one is $149.99. It's a little pricey, but you know, it did take a while to grow this plant. And truthfully, you know, Epipremnum panatum albos are still somewhat pricey, even though they're easy to propagate. And this is a nice looking Monstera Thai constellation in a six inch planter for um, $89.99. So $90 and you will get a beautiful looking Monstera Thai constellation. Now that they are more readily available, I would urge everybody to really look at the type of variegation you want. Some are more highly variegated than others. And again, it's really in the genetics of the plant. So if you find one that's highly variegated, most likely it will push more variegation than one that's more so green. Um, just a little tip for that or just what I've seen so far. I'm not an expert, but it's really cool to see that there are Monstera Thai constellations available to purchase now in the main market. And then obviously look at how beautiful these Riker Begonia are. I have spent so much time at Callaway's, but I never really get tired of it. So I really do appreciate you guys checking out um, this video. Hopefully you've stayed through and really watched it. I do like making longer content. So if this is your cup of tea, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. You can see right here, that's another um, Philodendron Selum. And I'm gonna just walk over here and just show you guys a little bit more of what plants they have at the beginning. Beautiful Epipremnum arium neon pothos, for instance. Um, we've got an Aglonema red siam. We've got some type of sections where they're showing um, different types of moss, a ficus lyrata, and look at this really cute Monstera um, Thai constellation. I do like the juvenile leaves as well where it's not fenestrated. And we have some full um, oxalis. We've got the green one and the purple one and then some large Calathea macayanas right over here. Gotta love the Calathea macayana. It's um, a classic Calathea. It's probably the least finicky for me. Um, I have one that I bought at Home Depot for $29.98 and it's doing very well for me. But you can see that they, that Callaway's has a variety of large plants, small plants, indoor, outdoor plants. So I highly urge everybody to come check out any of the Callaway's locations. They're all really good. And look at this. This is a beautiful Aglonema Red Siam. You already know I love Aglonema. And I'm going to pan over here and show you this beautiful Epipremnum Pinatum. Um, Albo on a totem. Look at how beautiful the leaves are. Look at that variegation. And as it grows up a pole, it fenestrates. I love that as well. Um, I also love the pl the planters and also the pottery they have. And then we have some Monstera Thai constellations. Do you guys remember when Monstera Thai constellations a couple years back were rare? And then this green glow is um, for $12.99 is what I actually use to spray on my leaves to make them super shiny, um, super easy. I love them. They, they definitely make your your plants look beautiful any leaf shine and it doesn't like really hurt the plant at all 
and you can see right over here this is a very tall totem i'm not sure how much this totem is but look at how beautiful the fenestrations are being from the philippines this plant is actually um seen throughout just everywhere they grow like weeds but it's so interesting that to see epipremnum panatum um, sold as like house plants um in the united states because in the philippines which is where i'm from and my family's from those are pretty much considered weeds they just grow everywhere and you can see we have all of these plants. And then this one is another Epipremnum panatum. This one is an Epipremnum panatum Cebu blue. These come from the Philippines. They are from the Cebu Islands, Cebu Islands in the Philippines. And you can see they are epiphytes. So epiphytes means that they actually want to attach to something and grow up. And the more that they attach and grow up something, they the, the larger the leaves are, and then the um, it starts to fenestrate. So yeah that is nice to see i've seen those for a while and they haven't sold but it's good to know that they are still healthy and this um callaway's location always keeps its um its shelves pretty full and i know that they're going to be getting some more plants but you can see right over here that one started to fenestrate i have a cebu blue pothos it's actually trailing but i would love to be able to um, grow it up a pole so we can see how large the leaves are but I hope you guys have enjoyed so far the Callaways, um, the plants. I know that we got, we've got that going and I ended up buying this and selecting this and this um, strawberry begonia to um, take home. I'm going to make this into a bonsai and if you stay tuned, I will show you how I put this in a bonsai pot and then I will also give you guys updates on its journey. But really excited to show you guys Callaways. I hope you've enjoyed this portion of the video and stay tuned for the final part of this video. I know it's been a little bit long, it's more than an hour, but if you stayed along with me, please make sure you hit the like button and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. But as you guys can see, here is the process of uh, making a bonsai so you want to make sure you have good bonsai soil so i got this from the bonsai supply i bought that off of um, amazon and i have the pre bonsai right over here i have a shallow pot that i used to have a bonsai and i actually bought that from callaways i have some um, netting right over here to make sure that i cover the drainage hole so i'm going to cut that and make sure i set that up and um, put that in at the bottom once i do that i will get some of the wiring so you want to make sure you get the wiring so you can actually tie down the pre bonsai or the bonsai um, tree into the shallow pot so i'm going to just stick it under here and i'm going to go ahead and make sure that i um, stick it under this hole as well so my plan foldies if you're new to bonsai bonsai is the um the art of growing something like a tree in a shallow pot it originated from china then got really popular in japan it's actually more um, um synonymous to japanese culture but um typically you don't see jade bonsai or succulents but this one i couldn't pass up 12.99 for that and you can see that it really has a nice looking um, shape to it i will eventually wire this up but for now it's about just getting um the the plant into the actual bonsai pot so i will put a small layer of this um, bonsai soil it's a mixture of a lot of things lava rock um, some pumice and something else that's a really good mix so with bonsai soil they need to be fast draining because it um the the chances of root rot is not a good thing to put in a shallow pot you never want to use potting soil you really want to use something like a bonsai mix that is very easy to drain um, otherwise you might risk um, actually you know root rotting the plant especially for a succulent like this jade plant I'm just really excited to show you guys this. I haven't made a bonsai in a while. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually breaking down the roots to make sure I can spread it out as best I can and um, get it attached to the actual um, pot. So that's what you want to do when you're creating a bonsai. I'm not going to do any pruning or trimming. I'm just simply going to get it set to where it'll acclimate. And then maybe later on in the spring, I will do some styling, like actually wiring it and all of that. It's been a while since I made bonsai. Um, back then, I used to make Japanese maple bonsai. I made bougainvillea bonsai. I made azalea bonsai. You can really make bonsai out of anything, but typically it's usually like shrubs and trees. Um, but I've even made bonsai using chrysanthemum um, flower bushes. So those are really cool. I have some old content that I might pepper in once in a while to show you some throwback um, plant content that I have. But as you can see, once you've um, spread out the you know the roots and got a lot of the um, the soil out of the way, 
you're going to um, try to spread out the roots so it'll actually grow more shallow versus going downward. You want it to grow more um, horizontal versus vertical. And that's what you want to do with this plant. Now, I will, once it's settled, you want to water it with like Super Thrive, something that will definitely take the shock out. I'm actually going to get some of that root ball exposed to give it what you call the nibari nibari is the bottom flare of the trunk so we're gonna show that a little bit i'm gonna have that actually exposed but once you get that in here um i will go ahead and well um you know get this these wires and actually slip it through the roots and i'm gonna go ahead and dig it back down so i can stick it down underneath the pot where the drainage holes are and then actually tie it so that way it doesn't move since there's not a lot of root you know an established root system here you want to make sure that it stays attached so if like wind blows it it doesn't fall over and it's just um attached you always want to make sure that your bonsai is attached or at least that's what i learned um in terms of bonsai i pretty much taught myself by watching YouTube videos. I actually got into bonsai because growing up, I watched The Karate Kid and I liked um, watching Mr. Miyagi. He made bonsai and it was one of those things where, you know, if you're a 90s, you're an 80s baby and you grew up in the 90s, um, those are the things that you are more into. Like, it's just interesting that bonsai is a lost um, art or I feel like it's not as popular anymore. And I really wish a lot of the younger generation would get into it. I know we're all about the aeroids and the houseplants and the tropical plants but bonsai is such a cool hobby because not only is it an art form but it takes a lot of patience like literally some bonsai are not even to their full potential until at least 30 to 40 years like this one right here I would say the trunk definitely needs to flare up more. This one would not really be considered a beautiful bonsai, in my opinion, for at least another 10 to 15 years. So we will see um, um, what this looks like. I will definitely give you guys updates, but it's interesting that I was able to find pre-bonsai and show you guys how to do a bon make a bonsai. So right now I'm just literally putting the bonsai soil mix and you can see it's super chunky. It's pretty much like a bunch of like tiny rocks, but um, that's what you really need for a bonsai mix and then normally I use a chopstick but I have some um, thick wire this is wire that I can use actually to wire this um, plant up but that will be for another video I just want to make sure that I am you know getting the soil underneath making sure there's no air pockets making sure that the roots are pretty much um submerged into this um, soil mix and i really love buying the bonsai supply they actually have a cool youtube channel um jerome of the bonsai supply i've been watching for several years it's really cool that he has really grown his business using um you know his bonsai youtube channel care tips and now they have a full-blown business i like that you know with plant foldy you know my plant foldies i would really like to maybe someday make my youtube channel more so um like a plant something where i could sell products like maybe plants origami or something like that there's just so many ideas but for the short term i just um, am thankful that you guys have spent all of your evenings you know at least an hour um and just chatting with me and engaging with me but as you can see it's pretty easy to make a bonsai right you just have to have some really good material really good soil have some wire and that is it so this is the final product right now. I'm going to pan over here. Um, it still has a lot of work to do, but I am, you know, the last thing you need to do is make sure that you are watering it thoroughly, like making sure it's really submerged. So I put a lot of Super Thrive in some water to make sure that this plant can recover. I will keep this outdoors right now just because it is a jade plant. I can't really give, um, grow this indoors, but I will um, see what this looks like. I'm going to actually do some research on how to... Um, you know grow this type of bonsai but for all my plant foldies i really appreciate you guys watching my video i hope it was a little bit different for you today as always please like and subscribe to my channel grow fold and if you haven't already share my videos with other plant friends um let me know what other content you guys want to see but hopefully you guys like this bonsai as well i'm really excited to finally have a succulent in my collection um look at that isn't that really cool I will definitely see you guys on the next video. Um, just to let me know what you guys think about this bonsai. And yeah, look at this. See you guys on the next video. Bye.